Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with Ryan, Dave, and uh, our friend Hunter uh, sent in an email, and he wants to know what's Nerdarchy's opinion on combining games for tabletop RPGs. Drop down to the description below where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, where you can get weekly tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So, a lot of you guys out there are used to playing D&D and playing lots of fantasy RPGs. Well, sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you want to, you know, check out this or check out that. So, he wants to know, how do you can take a fantasy element and mix it into modern or or future or yeah, so, basically uh, genre bashing is what he, what he really mm -hmm. wants to know. And right. by bashing, I mean combining uh, one one or more different genres that normally you wouldn't find together. He uses an example of uh, diesel punk mm -hmm. as one of them. Uh, so I, you know, I think for the most part, our group has stayed mostly traditional fantasy. Um, with some forays into like superheroes and some Dresden stuff, but yeah, we, yeah, we, but that's yeah. like a specific genre. Like we stay genre, genre, genre. The I, I would say the most we've done as far as um, drifting or binding is when I ran my Shadow Realm campaign, yeah. right? And you know that you know in that there was definitely a lot. It was high psionics. It was high magic. You know there. You know I had. Uh, you know, created what I called ether ships, and basically you know, there there was basically a lot of floating land masses. There wasn't much traditional like uh, ocean per se. So it was like island adventures, and but yeah. because you had like pir you could do like a piratey thing on it. You can do st there were some steampunk elements to it as well, right. and it, had, like it had it had some of the the, f the future stuff that Eberron had in in it before. You know, we actually were playing Eberron. Yeah, that's true. But also, too, when you think about, um, so really nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, Dresden Files is noir and, like, fantasy magic, you know, mm -hmm. essentially. So it's it's and both things. Combined they, with modern, modern times. Right, in, in modern era. So it's contemporary sort of stuff. But that's all, you, there is really nothing new you're ever going to do. Mad Max. Mad Max is post-apocalyptic with vehicles. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like being a major part uh, of I'm reading a series now that is, it's like, so it's Victorian era. Mm -hmm. Uh Magic, if magic was real, very much reminds me of Dresden Files, mm -hmm. uh, with a touch of steampunk. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Just yeah, you know, just yeah, you know, just 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 a light phrasing of steampunk. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, that that's all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a couple elements that you like and slap them together, and, and hopefully you come up with something that works. And you almost might think about it in like percentages of, maybe it's like you know. 50% one thing, 25 another, and then your remainder. So that, I guess that leaves another 25%. But you, so you can play with it like it is almost like making a, um, a recipe where you're seasoning to taste. You're like, well, that's a little too far in this one way. That's a little too high science. I don't want it to be, I want it to be more Star Wars and less Star Trek because Star Trek is very like hard science. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like everything is derivative of the technology, whereas... Well, Star uh, Wars is science fantasy. Star, well, Star Wars is more of a fantasy thing because they don't really Does it care much. Force. That's the they magic. They don't yeah. really care much about the science of the world, really. Right. Like, there's some tech, but we don't get bogged down by it and concerned about it. And there's not a lot of story arcs that are going to dwell on it. Whereas, well, I mean, what Lucas really did with Star Wars is he took a traditional medieval stories and ideas and then mm, threw them into the future. It's also kind of a Western. Uh, and Western tropes are in there as well. So. There, are, there are some. So with with this idea that you have about trying to come up with, with something new, as these guys are saying, you want to you take the elements and uh, you're talking about how to mix in magic. So it's, it's something that you want to see what is going to be most interesting to you as the creator and to the players that are going to be at the, at the table. Uh, Sh uh, Shadowrun takes it from the approach that magic used to exist. It's come back to the world in 2075 using the, the current iteration of the rules. So is magic part of the past? Has it always been around? Or is it something new that, that's coming to this world that you're playing in and people don't know how to interact with it? 
And those type of decisions are really going to allow you to map interesting story arcs and make interesting characters. Another thing you could do is just kind of like get all the people that are part of your gaming group to give you like their favorite right now movie book or whatever and see what tropes those all are and see what ones of those would actually combine together nicely. Mm. Um, you know, maybe somebody just saw a great Western that they were really into or a graphic novel with like cyborgs. Could you have like a cyborg Western sort of thing? I don't know, <laughs> that might work. So there's uh, an episode of Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, or many other things. So uh, Sly Flourish in um, Mike Shea Sly, Sly Flourish in the Lazy Dungeon Master has this whole section where he just basically takes up takes all these like crazy concepts and mixes them together in about one one sentence and you know basically these are campaign ideas like that's a great resource the lazy dungeon master you can find it on nerdrp.com uh there's a link to it but uh you know where, where he just does that as an exercise and really and like ryan said like if you can find out what your players are into and maybe you can put something spin something from that that you that you like because it does happen when you play the same old thing over and over again the romance the passion drifts out a little bit yeah another thing you may want to check out as well is the crucible of worlds podcast i'm not sure if it's still going on but every once in a while I'll throw an episode on and it's a it's a couple of people that write um in the in fiction uh i think they do like game development stuff and then they'll have usually have a guest on and in the over the course of 30 40 minutes they cre create a campaign setting um in discussion as much as one could in that but they just combine different elements and concepts and then they turn a game that into a game unto itself and really like me if you don't want to create something whole cloth yourself lift some of those ideas they actually do do it all under a creative commons so they're like if you do something with this just give us credit and let us know about it so, very cool yeah yeah, so essentially, you know, it comes down to what are you into, uh, and can you mix those things together? The answer is absolutely you can. <laughs> I mean, the results may vary. There's there's books, there's fiction written about um, dinosaurs having sex with people, and that's a fiction. I think I found this in the Crack.com article. I don't even want to. So know if your creating group is open to that and into it, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah. So if you have any other comments or suggestions, uh, you can put them in down below while you're at it. Like, share, even subscribe. You can check us out on Instagram. Hang out with us at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.